Hey, Chispa, you want some good news? Man, the Rose is single again. I have a chance. Don't squint at me like that. Wait, wait, why, why, why are you switching? Oh, that hurt, Chispa. Go, go back to your... Uh-oh. I have to figure out when I'm recording and when I'm not. Hello. Welcome again to the Hobo and something YouTube page. My name, again, I'm the one and only Hobo Tom. You know, I'm a hobo because I'm wearing non-WWE wrestling shirts. At least it's not an all-elite wrestling shirt to a WWE match. Boo WWE! Let people voice their creative freedom. When I went to... Oh, even though I did want to get a shirt at the WCPW show years ago in Orlando, I wore my clothesline wrestling shirt. There were many Young Buck shirts and a lot of Bullet Club shirts out there. W-O-E. Why? But let's talk about SmackDown. I'd like to thank everyone for watching again. If you do have a chance, you can always like, share, comment, and subscribe. Especially you, Mandy Rose. <laughs> so let's get into SmackDown. This was a weird show. They had their typical... F I don't know. It was just weird. They only had like three wrestling matches. And I'll get into some of the specifics. Very promo heavy and very future show oriented heavy. That didn't give much into what's going to happen. You know what? There are only. Who else is women tag team? Smackdown. Ooh. Jumping Bomb Angels! Yes! 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 I'll get into that shortly. So let's talk about Smackdown though. Like I said for the third time probably. We start off with a highlights from the Women's Royal Rumble. It was good. I mean, just kind of highlights. Um, Becky Lynch comes out, does a promo. Of course, punctuated by the fact that she's going to be taking on Ronda Rousey at WrestleMania. Charlotte comes out, applauds her. I made you what you are today. I've heard that before. Some movie, too. I have to ask my friends about that. Shoot, now I forget the movie. I made you. You made me first. And I've seen that movie too. And I think it's an older classical movie. Well, when I say classic, I mean the 80s or 90s. Was it Spider Man? Shoot. I made you. You made me. I'll have to look that up on YouTube. Something I have to Google. That's a good line. Um, so again, Charlotte, again, for the most part, says, yeah, I made you what you are. Becky just punched in the face. They start to brawl. Becky Lynch, you need to tan. I know you live somewhere in Orlando. You have to put on a bikini. Because one, you have probably a perfect bikini body. That's not being meaningful or sexist, but she is very cute looking. However, there was a rip in her shirt, and it showed her Irish skin, her true Irish skin tone, which is see through, pasty white skin. Ugh. Two things I've never liked really in women's so Becky's cuteness kind of went just one step down. And that's really skinny, bony women. Ugh. And really hyper pale death zombie. 
Becky Lynch fits probably in the second category. Again, she needs, she has to come to Daytona Beach. She just got a little son with Hobo Tom. That's something else. So again, they brawl. And then you have the first match. Of, and, and again, there was some good chance. The, the Phoenix crowd was... Oh, and Charlotte was all dolled up. I mean, she had on lipstick, makeup. She looked like she was going to spend a night on the town, just like her father. Woo! Rick Flair. Woo! Charlotte's going to be high styling. Woo! Profiling. Woo! Up all night. Woo! That's the way she looked, at least. And a little too much for my taste. Again, I have weird tastes. I know I've told some women. So you don't have to put on all that makeup. We're just going to Walmart to do some grocery shopping. Let's put on a shirt, t-shirt, and jeans. It's Walmart. Ooh. I'm going out. Yeah. Where's my wrestling shirt, my jeans, and my my sandals? Yeah, they're not called flip flops. They have like Velcro on them. No, but this was good. Um, again, there were the fights of Let Them Chant, and when they tried to break it up, I think they were saying, this is awful. Just let them fight. And I understand that. Then the match kicks off with Shinsuke Nakamura versus R-Truth. R this is kind of the consolation prize for being for getting beat up by Nia Jax. And there's a guy in the AEW shirt in the front, in the either if not front row, it had to be the second or third row. Because every so often he showed up, and, and I know there was the one account of the one person in the front row being asked to take off his All Elite Wrestling shirt. But when you saw the video of it, I'm just going to mention this kind of in passing. I have more important stuff to talk about. He had another shirt on underneath. And that always begs the thought, why? If I wear a wrestling shirt, I, I'll have nothing underneath. I just have an undershirt on only because it's chilly in, in my house. And this is a hobo office. I need some warmth. But I don't know. Again, there are Bullet Club shirts all over every WWE event. I try to stay more brand specific to NXT. I do like to wear either my Macho Man or my DIY shirt. When I went to SmackDown, it was my Machine Gun Carl Anderson shirt. When I went to WCPW, it was a clothesline wrestling shirt. And when I went to Raw, it was a Macho Man shirt. I'm not going to, to test officials and show up in my Bullet Club shirt. I have enough shirts I can figure out. And I have yet to wear my Steve... I forget, did I wear my Steven Larson shirt to an XT event? I might have, but that was really local here in Daytona. That's a whole other thing. So, the match starts off... Well, the official kind of wrestling starts off. With Shinsuke Nakamura versus R-Truth. This was a weird match. And R-Truth kind of gets the booby prize. And gets to take on Shinsuke Nakamura for the U.S. belt. Shinsuke looked really strong. He had he was just beating up R Truth for the most part. Again, R Truth kind of went after Shinsuke early on. Shinsuke recovered during the commercial break because they did the the weird picture and, 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 and picture thing. And Shinsuke obviously is a much more heavy striker, much more um, dominant. What do I call it? Preemptive striker. The wrong word, but... Prominent striker, I'm sorry. Barely read my own handwriting. But... It was kind of a weird finish. It was like the ref... It was like a ref botch. Where you almost saw Shinsuke's shoulders come up like right before three. It was supposed to be that dramatic finish. Because the weird thing is, after Shinsuke got up, he started to complain to the ref. And our truth tried to kick him in the head. So I don't even think R-Truth knew. 
Carmelo had absolutely no clue what was going on. I just knew the ref. One, two, three. I'm like, okay, he's going to wave that third one off because his shoulders got up. And the bell rang. What's going on here? I don't know. So, our truth is a new U.S. champion, and it was weird and botchy, and kind of no one knew what happened. When it's weird and botchy, hate to tell you. You know what? I'm gonna yeah. It's a can of soup match. You're like. This really didn't happen, did it? So again, it was weird. And it kind of made things stranger. Because Rusev came out with Olympic Lana. Lana, oh boy. Spent a couple days talking about her and, and why she's not further in the WWE than she is. Because her and Carmella were drawing each other. You could tell the ravishing Russian Lana has a deep and a silly accent. Make sure I don't run over my cat. There we go. She just straight away. Welcome back. This was an impromptu. So then Carmilla shoved Lana, and of course she fell down. Rusev got going to get into Carmilla's face. Archru said, "No, you're going to deal with me." They got in a shoving match. Rusev just shoved Archru to the mat. Ding, ding, bell rings. New match. Um, Rusev's versus R-Truth. And this really wasn't much of a match because Rusev is just a strong brute. He was just tossing R-Truth around, doing kind of whatever he wanted to. And then... Again, R-Truth got that fluky pin. It was that quick, weird roll-up thing. Rusev left. Rusev lost. Was upset that furious that he lost, and continued to beat up our truth. Shinsuke comes out. Rusev just stares at Shinsuke. Shinsuke just beats up our truth. Rusev beats up our truth. Our truth is getting beat up by everyone. And again, this is that weird match. It kind of did this, I guess. To legitimize our truce win, if you need a second match that quickly, WWE, this match is another can of soup match. And that's weird because I haven't given a can of soup. Out in a long time, I think. I think the last time I did it had to be on, had to be because of a raw. I can't even remember. Unless it was a Boo Sonya Deville match. She's, I, I'm notoriously tough on her because she took out my Princess Kimberly. She, the WWE made a bad decision. They said, keep Sonya Deville. And they got rid of Princess Kimberly. Still has me feeling to this day. Princess Kimberly could have been everything. Again, she's my princess. So, <sighs> so we have Heel Rusev. Then we get into a bunch of stuff. Hard to say otherwise. Um, Becky starts to limp off. Says, I'm not going to be... What's the opposite? Medically cleared. Put it on the shelf again. That's it, because she was put on the shelf when, when she broke her nose. But that wasn't that major. She was, I think she was only gone for a month. Maybe. Broken noses, depending on what they break, I know it can heal up really quick. I think the orbital bone... I don't know. For some reason, hockey players always... Recover from a broken orbital bone fairly quick, too. 
I mean, it's one of those bones you do have to be careful with, but it's not nothing you can really do about it. Um, so Becky kind of limps off, says, I'm not being put on the shelf again, and no one's looking at me. Then there was the Rey Mysterio match against Samoa Joe. And kind of right after the commercial break, there's an R Truth thing of him getting medical attention. I don't know. This show was just all over the place. It was kind of weird. Um, then Rey Mysterio was distracted by Zelina Vega. By the way, gentlemen, Alistair Black put us all to shame. Because there was a rock, something the size of my eyeball, on that finger of hers. I felt shame. Um, and then, of course, because Mysterio was distracted by Zelina Vega, Andrade Steen Agnes, El Idolo, came out. I'll call him by his full name. It's not Andrade. Andrade Sin Almas Almas El Idolo. Just jumped him. Um, mocked his at one time good friend Eddie Guerrero. Unfortunately, Eddie Guerrero did pass away. Um, he did the Three Amigos, which was the triple suplex, the kind of leg spinny thing. And I think instead of the third suplex. He put him in the hammerlock DDT, and that was it. And just kind of stood over Ray and said, El Ilo! Would be neat to see him take the mask, take the mask of Ray Mysterio Jr. Then uh, backstage you have Rusev gets confronted by the club of Gallows and Anderson. and says, why'd you do that, man? That ain't cool. He's like, I, I lost. I was mad. I was angry. And like, man, you gotta chill out, man. And then they started to say, well, are you gonna do anything? Rusev said, are you going to do anything about it? They're like, yeah. And then Shinsuke just pops in, challenge accepted. Back to their days of New Japan where, where he just challenged people. And they accepted. And then there was a Sh Shane and Miz promo, kind of retrospective. Miz's dad showed up. Kind of just recaps everything that ha happened on the lead-up to the Royal Rumble. And what happened at the Royal Rumble. Um, breaking news! Um, there was a four-way four elimination. They introduced the, the Usos. Goes to commercial break, and they're really doing this a lot. And I guess this is done because I'd like to I think when I went there, they did do some taped segments during the commercials. Kind of at least keep the audience involved. And I'm sure they can do the thing of magical editing. Show it for TV then. They always seem to be off a little bit, I think. Um, you have Sonya and Mandy Rose. They declare, they, I declare, I do declare, I do declare. No, man. That they are going to enter the women's tag team elimination chambers. And that actually got me thinking, how many women are there? in the SmackDown roster who are actual tag teams. I could only think of two true tag teams. Mandy Rose, Sonya Deville, the iconic. Will they? You heard it here first, folks. Hobo Tom says that the WWE is going to bring back the Jumping Bomb Angels revision. And Io Shirai and Kyrie Singh. You heard it here first. Obo Tom says there's gonna be the new jumping bomb angels. That shows that 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 tells you a little bit about my wrestling background. I'm gonna call Io Shirai and Kyrie Singh. Again, the new jumping just call it just call them the jumping bomb angels. They own that name anyway, don't they? They own every other name. Oh, that's what happened. Yeah. I saw it funny for a second.
these shirts are so comfy, but they're very loose, very soft feeling. Soft, comfy, warm shirts. And with that, Mandy Rose was saying how she was humiliated by Naomi on Tough Enough. Tough Enough, I think I saw one or two shows of it. It used to be, I think, on MTV. It's either on MTV or one of the lesser known cable shows. Well, one of the non mainstream cable shows at, at, at the time. And she showed footage on how Naomi humiliated her in the ring. And she felt so bad, she cried. Oh, Mandy Rose, here's a nice, strong shoulder for you to lean on. I can hold you and you can cry on, on this shoulder right here. Because she said, because of that, Mandy Rose is single. There is hope for one hobo. Mainly hobo top. Mandy Rose, I look forward to seeing you in the future. Again, especially Mandy Rose. You can like, share, email, and subscribe. And you'll definitely get a special video just in your honor.